Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. It's a new era, a new day for the Ping Pong Flick Show, as you can see from the changed intro. If you didn't notice, there's some additional type of movies that were in there that are not DC related. And so I don't know if you got to hear, but I did have a video out yesterday. I took a pause, did a video called We Have to Talk, which I would that pretty much explains everything uh, to the format and the content of this video now. I mean, I think the format didn't really change. It is daily entertainment news as opposed to just DC news. Um, and that video will explain why. But before we get into the topics for today, I want to like to thank the newest members of the Ping Pong Flick Show. Thank you to Nicholas Fornelli, Gus J., K. Von Merrill and Manu Del Peck, thank you so much for joining the Ping Pong Flick Show and supporting my channel. Uh, and I would also like to thank uh, the rest of the members, the people, even the members that rejoined. I was kind of surprised to see a lot of that happen. Uh, thank you so much for support. Thank you so much for subscribing and being a member of my channel. I, I hope, you know, I humbly and wholeheartedly. Thank you for the support. All right, let's get on with the topics. The topics of the day, the first one is Army of the Dead. Reminders are now on Netflix. This is exciting. That means we're getting a little bit closer to actually getting to see Arm of the Dead. But what is surprising is that according to all things Zack Snyder, that there is not only Army of the Dead on here, but there's actually the prequels and the Army of the Dead Las Vegas on here, you know, the animated prequel and the other one as well. So I'm I'm shocked by that because when I looked up on Netflix, and it could be uh, according to location and region, I looked up on Netflix, I did see Army of the Dead on there, and I set the reminder, of course, but I didn't see the prequels at all, so I don't know if that is like a like it's like he he mentioned it's like it could be a regional thing, a country thing, or location. Um, I didn't get to see that, but I did see Army of the Dead on there, and that's exciting. Clicked reminder <laughs> for myself because I can't wait to watch that. It's one of the I don't really you know I'm not really into zombie movies. You know, I mean, I'm not that much. I mean, I've watched Dawn of the Dead and I've watched other, um, a lot of the Korean ones as well. And, uh, you know, even the, what was the one with Brad Pitt? The one that they really, really fast. And there was like a ton of them climbing up a wall. A World War Z, I think. I've, I've, that's awesome. But other than those, I don't watch Walking Dead. But there's something about Army of the Dead and probably because of Zack Snyder and probably because of how it was shot and the stuff that I know about it, that gets me excited for it. It's more than a zombie movie, and it's going to be a kick-ass action thriller suspense film as well. So I, I can't wait to see this. Um, and as you notice, that is my background today with the Snyder Cut right above my head. Yep, that's the Snyder Cut, all right. And that's awesome to see that. Uh, hopefully they see that in the movie and actually interact and grab the canisters. So that'd be pretty cool. All right. The next thing, because we're talking about Zack Snyder, and uh, and I'm still going to continue Zack Snyder's uh, the support for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Absolutely, Harry Lennox decided to put rumors as in his words, even though he already confirmed it uh, the other day on Collider. And you know, Zack Snyder always already said that he was Martin Manhunter, but whatever. Um, Harry Lennox finally putting the rumors to rest. Hashtag Snyder Cut, Martian Manhunter, Justice League, how it started, how it's going. So that's kind of cool uh, to see him just come out and say that and put that out there, interacting with the fans, if you will. And you notice he got a lot of love there and a lot of retweets as well. So, oh, I didn't re like and retweet. I better do that. Like it and retweet. There you go. Um, and then, because we're talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League and Justice League, uh, I have to get into what I didn't get it really get a chance to get into over the We Have to Talk video. So I will get into it now because there is a you know update on it and a response from Warner Media, um, in this case and Sarnoff. But let's get into it. Ray Fisher and the People versus Walter Hamada. Okay. 
let's get into that tweet. That tweet that Ray Fisher said for us to read a letter here. I will read it to you. I have received official confirmation that Warner Brother Pictures had decided to remove me from the cast of The Flash. I strongly disagree with their decision, but it is one that is unsurprising. Despite the misconception, Cyborg's involvement in The Flash was much larger than a cameo. And while I do mourn the lost opportunity to bring Victor Stone back to the screen, bringing awareness to the actions of Walter Hamada will prove to be a much more important contribution to our world. On December 30th, 2020, I made it clear that I cannot, with a clear conscience, uh, conscience uh, participate in any production associated with the current president of DC Films, Walter Hamada. The reasoning behind that declaration was twofold. Walter's purposeful attempt to undermine the Justice League investigation in order to protect his friend and former co-president, Jeff Johns, Number two, Walter's attempt to protect himself by contributing to the public dissemination of lies and misinformation about myself and the Justice League investigation in Warner Brothers Pictures, September 4th statement to the rap. Bear in mind, Walter Hamada interfering with the Justice League investigation is a completely separate issue than the investigation itself. And while Walter's behavior was not a point of focus for the investigation of the Justice League reshoots, his dangerous and enabling actions during the investigation process must be called to account. On July 7th of 2020, during a 57-minute long phone call with Walter, I made multiple attempts to have him escalate my claims of misconduct against Joss Whedon, Jeff Johns, and John Berg through their proper channels. Rather than escalate the situation when initially asked, Walter disparaged Joss Whedon and John Berg in an attempt to cover for Jeff Johns. When I alerted, Walter and Jeff was in fact a major contributor to the issues experienced, including blatant racism, Walter tried, but to no avail, to get me to reveal the names of witnesses and other specifics that could be used to forewarn Jeff of the claims being brought against him. Walter even went so far as to sharply dismiss certain claims of mine as untrue because of his work experience and personal relationship with Jeff. Walter indicated that he was briefed on Joss Whedon's problematic behavior well in advance of my speaking out on July 1st of 2020. That briefing likely came from Jeff Johns, with whom Walter served as co-president of DC Films. Regardless of how he was made aware, Walter knew that there was a legitimacy to my claims against Joss Whedon, yet he persisted in trying to minimize and dismiss the situation, claiming that it is a producer's job to protect the director and that he was looking to move beyond anything to do with Zack Snyder's Justice League. It wasn't until I argued Walter down that he agreed to escalate my claims as asked, citing it as above his pay grade, knowing that he had overstepped and that I had no intention of backing down. Walter made matters worse by making a tastelessly self-aware joke about not wanting me to put him on Twitter about this. Well, here we are. Despite Walter's best efforts, the Justice League investigation was able to expose the racist, coercive, discriminatory, and retaliatory behavior of Jeff Johns during his tenure with Warner Media's affiliates. It also has also led to the more immediate parting of ways between Warner Media and Joss Whedon. While it may be legally and financially safer to quietly phase Jeff Johns out, or to let Jeff Joss Whedon exit of his own accord, I share neither of those responsibilities. My responsibilities are and have been to try to protect those that were brave enough to lend their voice to the Justice League investigation, to use that little power I possess to ensure that the workplace behavior exhibited during the Justice League reshoots and its investigation never happens again. No one in any profession should have to argue with their employer for their claims of abuse, racism, and discrimination to be taken up the proper chain of command 
and no one in any position of leadership should attempt to dissuade those wishing to report such claims from doing so. Walter's actions have transformed this narrative from an investigation on the onset misconduct in 2017 to the examination of the present day cover-up culture of Hollywood. His contribution to Warner Brothers Pictures' September 4th statement to the rap was false, cowardly, and reckless. I maintain that Walter Amata is unfit for a position of leadership, and I am willing at any point to submit to a polygraph test to support my claims against him. I don't know how many instances of workplace abuse Walter has attempted to cover in the past, but hopefully the Justice League investigation will be the last. And if the end of my time as cyborg is the cost for helping to bring awareness and accountability be, accountability to Walter Amata's actions, I'll play it. Uh, I'll pay it gladly. Onward, gratefully, Ray. Accountability over entertainment. You reach a point in life where you simply must take a stand. I said, and I can't. I'm not sure if I can read that. Mammy, uh, Mammy Till Mobley. All right. That was the letter, the damning letter uh, um, um, that accuses Walter Hamada of all those situations, right? And I like to add, there's a lot of quotes in there. There's a lot of, um, a, the, these words are like as if he gone through, unless he, he's a really good writer, I'm pretty sure. But I'm pretty sure he probably, you know, with his representatives, with his uh, lawyers and stuff like that, drafted that together to put that out. Um, and I've talked about a lot about this on the other show and, uh, and also that, uh, you know, there is that part there that he was supposed to be, uh, in the flash more than just a cameo. So that was something that, um, obviously sounds like they're going to have to do some extensive things to the script now, unless they've has another version, but, uh, the, they probably have to rewrite that out. And if he's a, has a substantial role in there, there's going to be some issues with the plot in, in that case. And so, but there's a lot of time to work that or not. I don't know. I don't know what other people think about this in terms of the production crew. Muschietti's, don't know. Ezra Miller doesn't have social media, so on and so forth. But this is big. This is huge. Um, and um, it is sickening to see uh, that, you know, Walter Hamada um, has gone about this way, you know, obviously. And I'm, I'm actually happy that a lot of the actions, the remedial actions that have been taking place have been taking place or slowly being taken place. That's great. That's awesome. But um, there is something else here that is aside um, beyond or even more current than the Justice League investigation that is is not right. And it is something that in any workplace, in any place that you have human resources involved, any company, um, as an employee, you should be concerned. This goes beyond being acting as cyborg, as superhero and stuff like that. If you look at this as a, um, there is a, a boss here who, who are trying to keep you from getting to human or like just not trying to help you out in terms of getting the right things to human resources and, um, and, you know, you know, actually caring for the employees here. Um, I think there's something wrong with that. And I think any employee should look at that and say, you know what? I, I don't think that's right. I think that he should be as an employer, you should be very helpful. Um, in getting for you as an employee to be comfortable with where you're working at, to be comfortable with your bosses and things like that. Um, and that's why they have human resources involved and things like that. And so, um, and it seems like there's something here that is not right. And um, I'm, this is the reason why I've kind of just kind of changed my channel in a bit uh, to be more outside of DC films in a bit. Um, but I hope that something happens um, in regards to this and something did. And it's not something that we probably, we probably anticipated that there'll be a lot of pushback from Warner Media, but um, this one was a big one in, 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 a, in a not good way. But, you know, it did 
It helped bring the fans together. The people um, came out and hashtag I stand with Ray Fisher. It's nearly 100K. That was at 4.22 p.m. That was about four hours ago. So there is a lot of people who are, you know, uh, um, not happy and they are, you know, speaking out loud sharing their support for Ray Fisher, absolutely. And I think that's great. That's fantastic. And I think it's it's something that usually goes away because the actor gets, you know, either paid off or they get the new role or they're promised something. But in this case, Ray Fisher is all about accountability over entertainment. He's not taking a new role. He doesn't want money. And he is just there to make sure that justice is served. And he would gladly throw away his career for that to happen so um and i you know all my respect for that but the hollywood reporter did put something out and uh let me read let me see if i can pull up the article here so warner media is sticking by walter hamada even as uh the dc films president faces a new and continued attack from ray fisher um the actor who played cyborg in justice league so obviously um, they believe it's an attack on him, although he's just stating facts, uh, things that um, his situation and what has come across. So this is the company. They released a statement here, and this is actually coming from Warner Media Chair and CEO Ann Sarnoff. Uh, she said this, I believe in Walter Hamada and that he did not impede or interfere in the investigation. Furthermore, I have full confidence in the investigation's process and findings. Walter is a well-respected leader known by his colleagues, peers, and me as a great man of great character integrity. As I said in Walter's recent deal extension announcement, I'm excited about where he's taking DC Films and look forward to working with him and the rest of the team to build out the DC multiverse. So that is an official statement. Um, took a while for them to actually do that um, and put that out there. But I like to say, I'm wondering why Ann Sarnoff is talking. Like, where's Walter Hamada? Why isn't he talking right now? Like, why is he putting out a statement for this? And even Walter, uh, not Walter, even Ray also noticed that as well. He did a little Ray, um, you know, uh, a little Instagram live. And he talked about his situation. There are a few clips that um, you can, you know, uh, I can probably link this for you. And um, starting with this one, where he's prepared to go the absolute distance with this, I'm gonna credit DCU movie page for putting out some of the uh, important part points, bullet points of that conversation or that live rather. And so Ray was talking about the flash. The situation is still evolving. Uh, he's still prepared to go completely distant of this flash movie. Uh, his main concern is about the security of the people that helped with the Justice League investigation. That And he made it clear it was focused about what happened in 2017. What what Hamada tried to retain, when he tried to retain info from Ray in 20, that was 2020. So there's still a lot more stuff that is he's he's going to bring um has information on that he you know will be more prepared to bring out to public i think um and also he gives his personal feedback about the fake ass statements from the old hollywood trades machine like the frosty article and there may be a new one that came out today maybe i don't know uh, but he does say that you should support Zack Snyder's Justice League no matter what happens to him in the future of DC. Support Zack Snyder's Justice League because Hamada definitely does not want um, DC uh, to move, have have moved beyond Zack Snyder's. They want, I'm sorry, they want to move beyond Zack Snyder's Justice League. So they want to make it go away. And then we're, we're not going to let that happen, aren't we? So uh, also... Don't let you down. This doesn't get him mad. It gets him motivated. And there is still talks happening. There's still there's still things that are going on behind the scenes. So be prepared for that. And also one one quick little cool little thing. He said that if if Zach, someone asked if Zach calls you for a sequel, uh, would you answer the call? And you know, I gotta point out that's from Nathan. <laughs> but he he said yes. 
Um, if if Zach calls him for a sequel, he'll definitely answer the call. He'll definitely um, return for a sequel, definitely. So that's that's a yes. So if there if that were to happen, he'll definitely uh, go for that, absolutely. And he'll probably do anything that Zach wants him to do. So, um, but yeah, this situation is still going on. Let's see what happens next. Uh, and I hope, I just hope that you know something comes up in the fashion that. Um, they realize that they need to do something quick and fast in regards to this publicity right now. Walter Hamada should come out with a statement. Maybe he should even apologize or something. But it, it, it is not, it's not looking good right now for Warner Brothers. So, um, all right. Well, speaking of Warner Brothers and, well, Justice League, Ben Affleck had a... Um, you know, he had uh, a little comment on Batman and Kevin Feige. Yeah, he talked a little bit about a, a bunch of things, including his alcohol and things like that. Um, but I want to pull out this part in regards to um, where it really got really bad, right? So, um, and that was during a uh, time of Justice League. Um, he said that, you know, he, he even drank on set. He started drinking too much around the time of Justice League. Maybe even came on set, I think, um, drinking. And But he did say this. Um, I did Batman because I wanted to do it for my kids, explains Affleck, who has agreed to don the suit one more time in The Flash, which is due out in 2022. He said, I wanted to do something that my son would dig. I mean, my kids didn't see Argo, he continues. Zack Snyder wanted to do a version of the Frank Miller Dark Knight graphic novel series, which is a really good version of that. Unfortunately, there are a lot of reasons why things go the way they do in the movie business. And just because your face is on the poster doesn't mean that you're dictating all of those things. And even if you were, that they would go well. He adds, I wore the suit to my son's birthday party, which was worth every moment of suffering on Justice League. So shout out to him for going through that. Um... I don't know if that means he's going to wear the suit ever again, uh, aside from uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League and, you know, the Flash movie. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. And uh, also the the comment about uh, Kevin Feige, he said this. Uh, I'm Ben Affleck on Kevin Feige. You have to say the greatest producer, most successful producer who ever lived. He's the only guy in the world who, if told me, I know what the audience wants. This is what we're doing. I would believe him 100%. So hi. High praise uh, for Kevin Feige, definitely. And and I got to admit, you know, I may not like all the Marvel films, but um, he done a good job. He done a good job having all that positivity over it. Um, there's nothing, you don't hear anything about uh, discrimination, uh, racism. Uh, you don't hear anything about enabling and things like that. I got to say, he, he run a tight ship and a good ship over there, over at Marvel. So um, uh, it's it's amazing what he has done for even with all the hate he gets for uh, making movies for the audience that he that wants that type of thing, right? Uh, my kids definitely love it. So he's absolutely making the movies for my kids, and I enjoy some of them as well. And uh, it does go to show that Ben Affleck um, is praising uh, a great producer here in Kevin Feige. And, and also, you know, Ben Affleck is making a directing a new movie over at Disney. Um, and when we get more information on that, I'll probably um, talk about that as well. So, yeah, comments on Batman and Kevin Feige. Now we're talking about Marvel now. Let's talk about Marvel now because I can't. Um, this is coming from Deadline. And this is weird. So Deadline is reporting that Captain America eyes return to the MCU. What? In a move that is sure to rock the Marvel Cinematic Universe, sources tell Deadline that Chris Evans is cleaning the dust off his Captain America attire as he is expected to reprise the role in the MCU in some form. It's still vague whether the deal is closed, but Insider says it's headed in that direction for Evans to return as Steve Rogers, also known as Captain America, in at least one Marvel property, with a door open for a second film. 
Sources add it's unlikely to be a new Captain America installment and more likely to be what Robert Downey Jr. did after Iron Man 3, appearing in such films as Captain America Civil War and Spider-Man Homecoming. Marvel had no comment. And this is weird because Evans had been very public that he would be hanging up the shield after Avengers Endgame. And we already saw that, right? Uh, with Marvel going as far as having the character hand the shield to Anthony, Ma Anthony Mackie's character at the end of the film in a torch passing type of moment. Now, well, what's interesting about this is that Anthony Mackie did come out and say that, you know, um, that's not what it was. He wasn't going to be the next Captain America. Um, he actually said that in an interview, um, some Zoom call or something. And so that, so I guess that was a lot. There was a lot of speculation going around that maybe you know um, Chris Evans would come back. And so this is Deadline reporting it right now. Well, Chris Evans did have a, something to say about this news to me. What? News to me. He had no idea <laughs> that he's coming back or in talks to come back as Captain America. What is going on? So there, there are a couple things here. He could be one of those where, you know, Marvel has a sniper, you know, like like Warner Brothers and like all these high profile movies, they've got someone making sure you don't give things away. It's a giant secret and things like that. Yes, that could absolutely, could definitely be uh, something about that as well. And they told him, you know, put out a tweet that you don't know anything about it. So we keep it a secret because when we watch like, um, you, know, you know, the Falcon and Winter Soldier and then you show up, that would be pretty awesome. Everybody going, ah, you know, just like how Luke showed up in Mandalorian. Sorry, that was a spoiler. But like like that, right? That could definitely be it. And then there's like, then and, and uh, news dropping is, is quite interesting after we kind of, you know, um, in a way, after we trended right hmm it's it's weird it's weird that it came out today and sources insider sources are, are telling them to put this out and chris evans not a moment after just says news to me what the heck is going on what the heck is going on indeed I think it would be cool if he came back as Captain America, but I think it would be, you know, it would make that ending really, you know, not stick. Like, like it, it, I think it, it's better if he, it, it ended the way it did, right? Um, I think it would have been better like that. He's, 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 he lived his life with his loved one. And he's older now, unless this is multiverse. But it is interesting how this came out and squashed this quickly at the same time. So we'll see. We'll see what happens in Falcon and Winter Soldier, what happens in that series on Disney+, Plus, and then, you know, anything that comes out. But I think, you know, we're, we, just, we just got to the next, we even next phase yet, and he's already back. That That makes it kind of... Hmm. Yeah, the stakes aren't that high uh, for Captain America, uh, it appears. So anyway, but there is one cool thing that is coming out uh, probably tomorrow, and it seems like it's tomorrow, but it looks like, according to Louis Tan, who is in Mortal Kombat, the new Mortal Kombat movie, there is going to be a, probably a trailer tomorrow. I think the trailer is going to be tomorrow. I can't wait. He, he even laughs as LOL, sleep well after this. Tomorrow will be flawless. Wow. All right. I love Mortal Kombat. I can't wait for this movie. Um, it's going to be awesome, I think. Uh, I love the first movie. Don't quite care for the second movie but i love the first movie definitely was in theaters when i watched that first movie um and uh that soundtrack is dope man mortal kombat <laughs> yeah 
Okay, sorry. Um, but yeah, definitely Mortal Kombat trailer coming. I'll probably react to that uh, if that comes out and um, give my thoughts on that as well. All right. Well, that is it for the big topics for today. Let's get into the Ping Pong Flicks members' comments and questions. I realize there's probably going to be a lot in this and it's going to be a longer show, but I that's fine. Uh, I'm just happy that you guys are commenting and putting questions in. I happily read it. That's what I'm going to do. So, um, like I said, if you want your comment or question read, please join as a member down below. Put down your comment or question on this video, and I'll read it on the next daily show. All right, so I'm going to go backwards because there were some from the Martian Manhunter uh, video here. Uh, Shane S. Alman. Happy to be here. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm happy you're here as well. Uh, Shane S. Elman, I have an idea where can we can get what we want in the continuation of the Snyderverse and Walter and company get to run character legacies into the grounds elsewhere. If they're going into the multiverse route, give Snyder and us Snyder fans our own Earth, call the Earth the Earl else world, then Walter gets to continue on Earth 1 and Reeves on Earth 2. But will we still get to see the genius continue his vision? What do you think of that? I absolutely agree, and I think that's how it's going to happen. Um, as long as Zack Snyder's just league successful, and um, I, I'm wondering, but but the the part the bad part is that Walter Mana is apparently his his position is green lighting DC DC projects over on HBO Max as well, which could probably be why now that I'm thinking about it. When Zack Snyder is just Zack Snyder, just Zack Snyder revealed to, to the comic book debate team that he says he doesn't have plans, um, anything after that, and he just had that look on his face, and it was a look of kind of like an irritated kind of look, kind of like I'm wondering it's because Walter Mata's in office, that's why he says I'm not going to work for that guy, I'm not going to have that guy greenlight me or something. I don't know. Um, so we'll we'll see about that, but definitely you're right. It will be on a separate universe altogether. Uh, when Martian Manhunter reveals himself to the team, I am going to lose my mind in the best way possible. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I'm going to lose. I can't wait to see what Zack Snyder's Martian Manhunter looks like. Uh, Brandon Hayes. Yes, the Martian is an important character. Also, it makes sense too because the Unite the Seven poster we saw now makes sense. The Martian is the seventh. The only reason why I know about how important The Martian is because I, I was an avid watcher of the Justice League animated series from the early 2000s that used to air on Cartoon Network back in the day. I wonder if Harry Lennox looked at that to get background on the character because, yes, he is a founder of the League and is the closest friend to Superman in the show in Season 1. So the idea that Martian has been watching Clark, Martha Kent, and Lois very closely is very fascinating. I wonder what Zack had planned for him in Justice League 2 and 3. But uh, like I keep saying, Warner Brothers Pictures got too impatient and ruined everything. And now four years later, they're struggling to pick up the pieces. Zack's vision was no cul-de-sac by any means. It was cinematic comic book movie greatness. But on a positive tip, that stunt team pre -viz is just amazing. You see, not only is Zack a genius, his people that work with him are geniuses too. And it looks like in the final battle, Batman and Flash step off to the side while Aquaman, Cyborg, and Wonder Woman battle Steppenwolf in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In that shot where Wonder Woman says, shall we? We see Cyborg, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman ready to fight. So that match uh, that previous looks like the other footage looks like the history lesson flashback of the armies of man versus parademons. Very Lord of the Rings-ish. Uh, and probably a lot more brutal too, I, I would add. Also, Luther's henchwoman look interesting because I was also looking forward to Jesse Eisenberg's Luther to evolve too. The only thing I think didn't hit me as well as the geeky spoiled rich kid Luther from BBS. I wanted to see Jesse's version of the character grown to the bald debonair, cool, sophisticated Luther, who is more like a white collar business class villain we know and love. I suspect that's why they had planned for Jesse in future movies. So the fact that Luther had these cool, sexy, but deadly henchwomen, that's which sounds, that watch him sounds cool. Yeah, I think he eventually does uh, turn that way anyway, right? Um, El Necron, hey, Chris, I like your branching out covering other film genres. Mad Max and Godzilla, who wouldn't love that? On another subject, Snyder is going to fix the DCEU. The execs were too fixated trying to be Marvel and didn't grasp the magic Zack was creating for them. Not going on a long tangent uh, because it's a broken record at this point. Have faith Zack Snyder's Justice League will fix everything. I am. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that 
Maybe it's probably, you know, I, I don't know if that's a problem. But if you support Zack Snyder's Just League, that goes against what Walter Hamada uh, and Toby Emmerich wants. They want that to fail. So if you make that successful, maybe it'll make them look bad, you know, I, I think. I don't know. Uh, season one of Batwoman is on HBO Max. Yes, I know. It, uh, it definitely is. Um, I'm probably not going to watch it, though. But thank you, Travin. Uh, George, hello, Chris. Good we vid. Good we vid about uh, we see vid about my favorite g game when I first started gaming. It was the first game I played and finished to get a cool upgrade to play it again, and I can say a lot easier than the first time. Yeah, Metal Gear. I did a Metal Gear video genre, etc. Solid uh, with Oscar Isaac. Um, I didn't get a chance to cover it when it first came out because I was DC centric, but now I'm not DC centric, so I'm gonna be uh, covering things a lot quicker now. Mr. Everett's what I loved Raiden. <laughs> well, well you, okay, I loved Raiden. Um, not the beginning of um, Man, Metal Gear Solid 2. He was kind of annoying, uh, but maybe later on in the story. Uh, and then it definitely after 2, like uh, Metal, the Guns of the Patriots, he was awesome. His own Raiden game, Raiden game was awesome as well. But yeah, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if, were, if was anybody here back in the day were like, what the hell? I wanted to play Snake, and I was that for a little bit. But when I played it again and again, like in hindsight, it was cool to see, you know, Snake Pliskin or Iroquois Pliskin, however you wanted to, you know, because they were, you know, trying to do that Escape from New York thing. But um, he wanted to, you know, not be known as Snake, Solid Snake. But then. You see him do heroic stuff, and it's like, wow, that's cool. That's cool. I need more of that. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, uh, I was one of those guys who were like, when I first played, it's like, what? I'm not playing Snake. Uh, Eric Blake, I can just imagine Lois's response about learning that Cal Swanwick, John Jones, was posing as Martha to interact with her. Uh, you know, with balls like yours, Mr. Secretary, you belong in Washington. You got a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> um, I'm going to speculate that the gorgeous bodyguards are instrumental in Luther's great escape from Arkham. Plus, I again expect the blonde bodyguard played by the Russian actress Benedict Cumberbatch's uh, girlfriend. Really? Oh, DCU Miss Testmacher. Oh, I didn't know that was um, his girlfriend. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. Uh, I'm curious to who's playing Big Boss. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'll probably be him, uh, Oscar Isaac, because doesn't Big Boss, um, Solid Snake is the son of Big Boss. It's really a, a clone. It's a clone, so he looks exactly like him. Uh, Doobie, no, please no to both Isaac, who's overexposed and fan cast for everything. He's the new Tom Hardy, and heck no to the Skull Island director. So much hate. So, well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, doobie but um yeah cool it's cool um but yeah i i don't know how it's gonna play out either um video game movies um naturally are don't do very well um with some exceptions like the first mortal Kombat movie but yeah we'll see how it goes nano machine son uh chris what happened oh well i explained that today and um Sickness, do what you got to do, Chris. We got you. I subbed oh, excuse me, and became a member because of your personality and character. Being DC-centric was just icing on the cake. Borg life, I stand with Ray Fritz. Well, thank you. I uh, truly appreciate it, Sickness, for staying on and um, continuing on. Uh, thanks for continuing the journey with me. Thank you so much, Sickness. Julian Ortega, don't know if you're a Star Wars fan, but if you are, you should cover that. I love Star Wars. I am. I'm definitely going to cover Star Wars now. Uh, I was thinking, I was, and when that whole bunch of slate of D, uh you know star wars stuff that's coming out on disney plus i was super excited and i was kind of bummed out at that time because i was like oh man i made a dc centric channel but now i'm not so definitely if you saw that intro um in the beginning of the show you do see a clip of bad batch and yes so definitely i am a star wars fan uh I, i'm i'm back <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm gonna cover star wars um, because Mandalorian is awesome, but anyway, Geek Haven Jan 86. More power to you, Chris. You're not losing me as a member. Accountability over entertainment. Thank you so much, Geek Haven. Uh, I truly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things I never took away. Like, I'm keeping that there. So, thank you so much for that Funko Pop. 
Um, Mike Smith, staying interested in DCU has been difficult since 2017. I'm only still on board because of your videos, Chris. I'm still hyped for Zack Snyder's Justice League. The rest aren't that important to me anymore. Keep up your good work. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. The inter needs, and an internet needs your positivity and genuine enthusiasm. Well, thank you so much, Mike Smith. I, I truly appreciate it. Um, yeah, um, definitely there's a lot of great stuff outside of DC Films. A lot of stuff that I truly enjoy and love and get hyped about as well. And this opens me up uh, to talking about those as well. So, But thank you so much for uh, continuing on the journey with me. Thank you. Derek Schultz, I'm with you, bro. I'm not going anywhere. Thank you so much, Derek Schultz. Bowl of Indomie, here for you in DCU. Do what you need to do. Thank you so much, Bowl of Indomie. Uh, David Sherrington, Chris, you're putting a hell of a lot of faith on one man's opinion on the views of another. Uh, oh, Joss Whedon is gone. Jeff Johns is gone. On reading Ray Fisher's latest statement, I again, again, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing a lot of evidence that Walter Amato is on the same level as Joss Whedon or Jeff Johns. It sounds like Walter Amato is doing damage control. The Raps article also isn't a direct quote from Walter Amato in regards to the cul-de-sac comment, which the community is up in arms about. That could have came from Berg or anyone else. The Justice League investigation will never be released to the public. Momoa and Godot came out with about the Justice League investigation, and that seems to have been dealt with. I am genuinely worried that this amazing movement is going to start sounding like a bunch of crybabies who aren't getting what they want. None of us were there for that phone call, and it seems like there is a huge amount of bashing going on against Walter Amato for the call based on uh, Ray Fisher's opinion. Ray Fisher used a lot of guessing in regards to what he thinks went on behind the scenes with Walter Amato's dealing of the situation, and a lot of it is his opinion. No real evidence. I feel Ray Fisher just sounds like he's overreacting to a conversation he has had with Walter Amato and is not happy with the outcome. He won. Justice League investigation appears to have bad results. Uh, oh, had results, sorry. He can't have the moon as well. I hope people consider this and don't just jump on a bandwagon, but I do respect people's opinion if they do agree with Ray Fisher as long as they have considered other possibilities. Critical thinking is a great thing when approached sensibly. Uh, the other concern I have, and this is purely selfish one, is that this will affect what might happen with the possible follow-up to Justice League. But I have high hopes that... Uh, HBO Max will be spearheading that one in any case. You're a good person, Chris, and I know a lot of fans are as well. I respect your opinion, but I disagree with completely siding with Ray Fisher on this latest tweet. If using the tweet as evidence of Walter Amato's behavior towards Ray Fisher, the mention of polygraph te test also lost me. They are not an accurate representation of someone telling the truth, especially when used in regards to confirming the user's feelings and how they felt they were treated in a particular manner. Of course, it's only going to confirm that you thought someone was this or that towards you. Anyway, I love your channel and love this fandom. Like all powerful movements, though, sometimes we get too big for our boots or we become blind followers. I hope one man's opinion on a phone call he had with an executive doesn't make us sound unreasonable because that's what the naysayers will focus on. Regardless of what we believe, we should be respectful and sound controlled in our presentation regardless of whether i agree with you or not chris i can see you have done both um some people won't though a continuous follower of this channel david well thank you so much for continuing following the channel and like i said there's going to be a difference of opinions and it's worthy of discussion absolutely uh for me i do uh believe ray fisher and um and it's nothing i can prove to you and i definitely um and i i don't want i I don't have the means to prove to you and I don't expect you to believe me. Absolutely. You know, but um, I do, you know, the, the Walter Mata is, is one of those and Toby Emmerich trying to keep Zack Snyder's Justice League from being overly successful. It, it, they are doing their own plans over on that side. Absolutely. And they want to try to bury a lot of these things and um but yeah you're right ray fisher had a conversation with walter amana what came of that that's only between them two unless someone recorded it i don't know but that is separate from the justice league investigation but walter amana from what i've heard from not just what I've, what we've heard but it, definitely he is uh, he won't let it grow you know what I mean? So that's why I think the only thing we can definitely do now is support the hell out of Zack Snyder's Just League and make sure that is so successful that they cannot dust it away. They cannot cover it up. They cannot, they cannot hide its success uh, 
from the rest of Warner Media and AT and T. But thank you so much uh, for your continued support, James Lex. I stand with Ray Fisher and also stand with Ping Pong Flakes. Well, thank you so much, James Lex. Thanks you, uh, to totally appreciate it. Uh, Francis Louis Rayla, this is the reason why it's so hard to be part of the DCU fandom. Warner Brothers has always been the greatest villain of DCU. They claim they have made that they, they made decisions based on business paradigm, but everything they've done is self sabotage and frustrate, disappoint directors, talents, and fans. And they've been saying, you know, it's funny because a lot of um, reporters, you know, when the Snyder Cut was didn't wasn't coming out yet, and they said it won't happen because it's beyond money. It's about ego, and uh, and I've done countless videos about how could you let ego get in the way of business. But apparently, there is Warner Brothers. These executives are not willing um, to see that there is money to be had here. There's a business to be added here. That they are willing to throw that all the way to for their own pride, for their own ego, for and not 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 you know owning to their mistakes not owning to their mistakes that's just that is disappointing and, and and frustrating you know like any normal person if um you know if you see like if if i saw like a million dollars right there you know and and but i knew that i would have to get down on my knees and say sorry for everything that i've done wrong in order to get that million, and then yeah, that that could be greed, absolutely. But it is a business after all, and this this could save you and your family if you just admit that you've done all those wrong things. I would get down on my all four, you know, on my knees. When I say four, <laughs> uh, on all fours and whatever, down, and admit everything I've ever done wrong. You have that million dollars to save my family. Like that's that's. The equivalent of what's going on here, and so yeah, Warner Media overlooked, you know, Toby and and Walter, and said, you know what, got to release that Snyder cut, and they, you know, begrudgingly did it, and now they're trying to say that they don't, they want to move beyond it. It's like that was in 2020 when they said after it was announced, after the Snyder cut was announced. They still said they want to move beyond Zack Snyder's Justice League. And so that's just the, yeah, anyway. Uh, David Sherrington, in addition to my last post, I look forward to seeing your new content. Well, I appreciate that, David Sherrington, uh, absolutely. Uh, we may not agree on this. We'll probably agree on a lot of other things that are beyond DC films, apparently, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I'm peril. They don't care for their workers nor their fans. It's nothing but right to turn our backs on them. <laughs> yeah, um, tough. I mean, uh, it's such a... It's so tiring, um, but but thank you, Amparo, for your comment there. Um, Michael Serlo Mathelier. Hey, Chris, do you know if Ray Fisher and the other affected parties filed a harassment and hostile work environment uh, charged with the e, uh, executives against uh, Warner? Oh, I'm sorry, employee. Uh, what do you call it? Equal employee opportunity uh, in 2017, or since he has written off in retaliation since. This event is the last adverse action taken against him. He may be able to file a discrimination charge. Uh, and that's the website. And the LA district office should handle their allegation. Hope this helps anyone affected. As for you, changing your channel to cover other movies, good for you. You have the right to make your change. We are with you. I hope AT&T will step up and handle this issue with DC and put Ray back in the movie since many of us just subscribe to DC, HBO Max for DC content. And I'm sure he has, you know, he he's not uh, on his own. He, you know, b before all this, he did say that he had the backing of SAG, Screen Actors Guild, his attorneys, his representatives. A lot of smart people are involved in this, definitely. Brandon Hall, I just want to say that I wholeheartedly support your decision with tremendous respect. When it came to DC Films, I was losing my taste after the initial Justice Justice League debacle. The way Zack Snyder was treated, the treatment of his work, the lack of respect for someone who had dedicated a majority of their career to their brand, and then the treatment of the fans continuous, continually giving us subpar products, flatly refusing to give us as the consumers what we wanted, instead throwing titles we weren't asking for almost as if to tell us to get over it. This isn't what you really want. This is really what you want, lowering budgets and giving mediocre production value. And then the suppression of Ray Fisher. 
That was where I began to draw the line. He practically sacrificed himself, his career, just to ensure the studio was held accountable for their mistreatment of those pouring blood, sweat, and tears into their products. And then Wonder Woman 84 completely killed it for me. As a fan, the only thing I look forward to is Zack Snyder's Justice League. Beyond that, I need to see some changes. I need to see things truly rectified. If not, Zack Snyder's Justice League is the end of the line for me. Anyway, I appreciate your stance. I look forward to your new content. Much love and always take care. Well, thank you so much, Brandon Hall. Um, uh, yeah, I appreciate your words there. Definitely, Zack Snyder's Justice League is, is the one DC film right now. Just absolutely, I mean, I'm absolutely ecstatic for her. And you know, not you know, not to bow down to the Lord Kevin Feige, as some people like to call him, but um, like Ben Affleck says, you know, he he makes for his audience. He definitely does, and that's what Zach is doing. He, Zach is making movies for what he wants to see, and he's a fan like us, and it's what we want to see. Who who doesn't want to see, um, you know, the Justice League? take on Steppenwolf, and then later on take on Darkseid and have all these other Suicide Squad members and, and you know, so etc., etc., etc. It's like it's, it's an epic... It's an epic story of the making. Why would anybody want to bury that? It's beyond me. And so I think maybe even that's why Ben Affleck says, hey, look, you know, at least this producer, um, you know, makes things that people want. You know, like, yeah, definitely. I <laughs> like... They respect that, you know, so I don't know. But thank you, uh, Brandon. Shane S. Alman, I get all that, all that, believe me, and a lot of this pains me more than most. I would tell you why. In 2009, I was in a very dark place. As a writer, as a person, depression was crippling, and I just wanted to quit. I almost did. But then I came across a book in my local library. It was The Brightest Day uh, by Jeff Johns. Reading that book made me fall in love with comics again, inspired me to want to write again. Also, I was asked to a birthday by somebody who is now the mother of my child. I have felt like I owe Jeff for years and have idolized him. Hell, I want to be like him. But the stuff about him I cannot ignore. Too many people are saying it. I wish it wasn't true with every fiber, but it is. It's obvious it is. I idolize a horrible person, and although for personal reason it makes me want to freaking cry um i have to renounce support of the man i once idolized as my hero hashtag remove jeff johns uh i really do want to cry having to come to terms with my hero being a horrible person um hey listen man i'm sorry um that you feel that way definitely um it, you know and they do say like never meet your heroes um i'm glad i met my hero zach Murray, and he's every bit and more the man that i i learn to love him for so definitely he is a hero uh, but there are times when you'll meet your heroes and they don't turn out to be who you you know you think they're to be but you know what take that as motivation be better than him you know if you're a writer right now and you're writing take that motivation that you can be better than him. you can you can write like him, but you can be a better person than him. So take that as motivation for yourself. Use that as energy, positive energy to feel your own, um, your own urge, your own um, dreams of becoming successful, right? Because if that guy, that dude... Who had great? He wrote incredible stuff, but he's still became out, turned out to be a douche you know that means you can be just as great as him as a writer but even better as a person and i think i think that tells you something i think that is motivation for you so keep doing you keep doing what you love to do don't let that man dissuade you from being a great writer and use that energy to be a better man for you and your family. So, and your friends as well. So, uh, but thank you, Shane, for, for that uh, comment. Good day, uh, Frank Dombrowski. Always love this guy's words here. Good day, mate, Chris. You have my utmost respect and support. Uh, I have your back, my brother, no brainer. I'm on uh, Team Wong, Snyder and Fisher, not War DC, Warner Brothers, stay gritty, healthy outbreak free. You too, man. I, um, uh, I think you have still have some days left in quarantine, so I hopefully hopefully you got everything straightened out and you're able to um, 
I don't know. I haven't been watching the news lately, but um, hopefully you're, you're, you and your family are COVID free. Bowl of Indomie. So is Stephanie Justin uh, playing Quiet? Who's Stephanie Justin? Is that the person that played Quiet? I don't think so. Duchess model. I think that is. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think so. Like, I don't even know. That's kind of cool, though, Bowl of Indomie. But I don't, I don't think it's good. Like, you know, the director is saying it's an amalgamation of the different stories. So... Unless he wants to put wide there, I don't know. But I would probably expect he's going to choose um, uh, people to his liking. But, yeah. Lego Dinosaur. Chris, I loved and supported your channel before you started to cover more DC. I'm happy to support your channel. Whatever news you bring us, I told, agree totally. As a huge DC fan, my friends laugh at me. Everyone, every new movie, I'm like, this is the one. This will be amazing. Only to be disappointed with the choices. Wonder Woman was fun, but it was so disappointing. I'm excited for the Snyder Cup, but even then, I'm expecting to not live up to expectations because why should it? Every DC movie is let down, and it's a sad day to admit that we should stand with Ray Walters Toxic. Yeah, uh, but thanks for coming along, way and definitely, yeah, you're right. Uh, I wasn't a, uh, I think I've, I've said I was going to be DC centric channel like four months ago. So, and I've been doing this for over almost four years now, almost five, and so. Amazing journey, but learned a lot along the way. And yeah, I'm like you. Um, I love DC. A lot of friends laugh at me for loving DC films, but it has nothing has really struck me since um, since Batman v Superman. No, nothing has really, really, absolutely struck me since that. And I think Zack Snyder's Justice League will be those the ones that will make us happy. <laughs> Carlos N., you have to be happy, Chris. I support and respect your decision. Got nothing but love for you. Thank you. I stand with Ray Fisher. Thank you so much, Carlos. Uh, truly, sub um, absolutely. Yes, yeah, support Ray Fisher. Support Zack Snyder's Just League. And uh, thank you for supporting my decision. Uh, Doobie, it's like the old days. And, of course, I'm riding with you to the end, unless you drastically change in character. And your journey and education on inner workings of Hollywood sound a lot like mine. Awesome, Doobie. Thanks for sticking around, man. Truly appreciate it. Cosney, Cosney, things change. DC movies are problematic in front and backstage DC comics are problematic. It might stop altogether, unfortunately, but keep up on what you're feeling. We are with you. Thank you, Cosney. Thank you. Um, definitely, yeah, I mean, things change. Hey, if something happens in uh, DC films, executives change, and we feel a little bit better about what's where it's headed and, and what's going on, there's always room to come back. You know, there's always room to come back. Brent T. Wilson, hey, Chris, I feel you have hit the nail on the head in so many ways with this video. You are right. To be honest, I was only a surface-level popcorn film fan before the RTSC movement, uh, release the Sire Cup movement, I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm a lifelong DC fan. For you as a kid, it was soups. For me, it was Batman. We've all learned so much about films, how they're made, the awful behavior of studios, and the toxicity within the industry is clearly real. Be at the... Be at be that the studios, execs, certain members of the press, fans, and so on. I can't speak for everyone, but I'm here because I like you and your videos. And I now look forward to what you bring us in the future. And I'm sure it will be great as always. Ray's putting everything on the line, and I have nothing but respect for him. I stand with Ray Fisher. I stand with him as well. Definitely, yeah. Um, I try to always get the positives out of things, and there are some things that I have no control in getting something positive out. Uh, out of it, so I choose will choose to ignore that, and in this case, that is DC Films right now. But yeah, definitely, let's make Zack Snyder's Justice League the best movie they've ever had. <laughs> Jimmy Howley, I missed something. Obviously, what exactly happened to Ray, though? Did he ever give details? Wasn't Walter Mata from a non-entertainment field? Uh, Seven thirty-five is me, <laughs> but definitely, um, if you've seen this whole video all throughout the whole thing, you probably know where I'm at. Mr. Ben Everett, I wholeheartedly support this, my friend. Thank you so much, Ben. Uh, thank you so much for your support. And like I said, I will uh, – guys, once you guys get a join button, uh, definitely going to join you guys as a member, man. Uh, love you guys. Love you and Garza as well. Uh, oh, Necron, I have to follow your heart. I think mostly everyone subbed because of you. Your enthusiasm and passion for the movies is what makes the channel. I love DC as well, but the world doesn't end and begin with DC. Awesome content deserves curb coverage regardless if it is DC, Marvel, Star Wars, Legendary, and so on. Looking forward to where you take things. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I have, I'm taking things everywhere. Uh, DC, Marvel, Star Wars, wherever. 
um, you know, other than DC, Marvel, Star Wars, you know, all types of topics. Have you seen my genre, etc.? There's a lot of cool stuff happening around us, and um, you know, I should shine a spotlight on it. I, I, I'd say, right? So yeah, I mean, even the next, Mar I'm going to watch Wandavision. I'm going to see how that's uh, what's going on with that one. Hey, Chris, I'm with you all the way that this this with this decision. I and others have seen this kind of problem for a while. Not just with Ray Fisher, Gal Gadot, uh, but also with the issues since the 2000s of political bullying by those in authority in Hollywood. People openly on the wrong side of the aisle, even form big names like stars like Tim Allen, James Woods, and Gary Sinest are far less likely to have significant work in Hollywood if they don't toe the line or at least shut up. Well, accountability over entertainment, and this must all apply. Misapply must apply all the way. Uh, thank for you for all you do, Chris. I'm with you to the end of the line. I'm not really into politics too much, so I'm not sure what they said, but um, yeah, but I like it anyway. But yeah, definitely um, thank you for st sticking with me and uh, continuing on this journey with me, uh, Eric. Okay, Keith, you do you, Chris. Your positive attitude, looking for the good things, and that keeps me watching. That and the tinfoil. <laughs> thank you, Keith. Okay, Keith. And you know, I said there's not going to be tinfoil, but there's probably going to be tinfoil in some fashion. In fact, a lot of things when we're speculating about is automatically it's informed. Danny Gray, fully respect you for doing the right thing. Uh, it pains me how f this stuff is with um, f up. This stuff is with W and DC. Like I want so badly to be hyped for Flash, Batman, but there's just this bad taste in my mouth when it comes to Warner Brothers, and it isn't all of Warner Brothers, but the minority ruining for others. It's such a shame because I do think these upcoming films may suffer from all this as well. I pray Zack Snyder's Just League knocks it out of the park so Warner Bros. have no choice but to continue with Zack's vision. Sorry for the long comments. Uh, no problem. And to be honest, thinking about it of, of if you lose supporters, which I highly doubt you will, it does, you will, it doesn't matter because you wasn't supporting you. Real fans will support you. Well, I appreciate those uh, that comment. Definitely. Thank you so much, Danny Gray, for your support. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I just looked um, and no, I, I didn't lose anybody. Uh, at least I don't think. At least maybe I'm gaining more as, as much as I lose. I don't know. But I did uh, gain a lot of you members back and I, I truly appreciate that and gain more members. Uh, I truly, truly, <laughs> I can't even, I don't have the words, but I love you all. <laughs> I love you all. Uh, Sean Gates. Hey, I'm not going anywhere, brother. I'm a DC guy, but I'm a movie guy first, which is why so much of their content disappoints me. I quit watching CW a couple years ago. The reason I love film has always been the ex experience and the conversations that come after. I 100% support your decision. Thank you so much, Sean Gates. Truly support. Thank you so much. Travel Man Entertainment is here for you, Chris. I'm excited to see the future of the Ping Pong Flicks show. And yeah, that's right. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to grow and grow and grow. Um, and it's all thanks to each and every one of you. John Garza have a Star Wars centric show. Well, I won't. I won't be centric, but I'm definitely gonna talk about Star Wars. Hey, by the way, I, how can I be a Star Wars centric show? Um, well, how can I talk about you know other movies like The Boys or Raised by Wolves if I'm a Star Wars centric show, Garza? Think about that, right? So I'm definitely gonna um, talk about all of that as well um and uh, more and more super email chris did you ever see the movie cursed by wes craven that is another studio meddling cursed was intended to be an r-rated movie with practical effects by legendary rick baker but instead it got released as a pg-13 cut with horrible cgi werewolves because the weinsteins demanded reshoots and fired baker who released the craven cut oh you know that could be an edit a future editorial super email I'm going to have to mark that one. Um, definitely will look into it. Thank you so much for that. You can talk about whatever movies you want. I look forward to hearing a little about your thoughts on sci-fi and horror. I'm staying subscribed as a member. Thank you so much, Super Email. I truly appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely, I, I got to look into that cursed one. Brandon, thank you, Chris, for lending your voice and speaking about, about, uh, out about something that is bigger than all of us. Systemic racism, cover-up culture, and blatant lack of accountability towards those who are abusive in positions of power and leadership in any workplace or government is a problem that affects us all. Personally speaking, I just recently parted ways um, with an organization that I spent nearly 10 years with dedicating to lending my body and the performing arts to display my culture on stage only to be treated like a child and dismissed when I informed the board of directors on accusations of emotional abuse that I witnessed, heard of, and experienced myself. 
happening in the studio. Rather than working with me or us to address the issues, I was told that it was my or our own fault for the way I or we are treated during practice and that they wouldn't seek repercussions for their artistic director's behavior because he's too valuable of an asset. Wow, that sounds very similar. I stand with Ray Fisher and every victim of racist discrimination and will continue to support you and your decisions to rebrand your channel. I won't be supporting the projects being made that are associated with those who enabled and ignored the toxic and racist behavior described by Fisher. Moving forward, it will be interesting to see the range of films besides DC projects you and your viewers are excited for and want to discuss. Well, thank you for sharing that story. Um, wow. That does is exactly what Ray Fisher is going through right now. Um, uh, and I'm told I'm really sorry to hear that, but that, yeah, that does happen everywhere. It's not just Hollywood, as, as you pointed out. It happens everywhere. It doesn't happen, not even in, like uh, where you're at as well, in the military, um, uh, in the bank, and in, in the restaurant. It happens anywhere, and it, and it is a problem. It is, it is a thing. And, yeah, and that's the whole basis of accountability or entertainment. You know, you're protecting someone that, yeah, definitely is he's successful writer and, and is attached to many projects, but that shouldn't go in the way of, of you know, being accountable for things, right? So absolutely agree to that, and uh, I'm sorry to hear that, but um, I hope everything worked out, and it's, it sounds like it did for you. Joshua Rivera. Wow, wow. So much respect for you, Chris. You are the only channel I ever support as a paying member. Keep going. You're doing great. Well, wow. I thank you for choosing me as the as a channel to be a paying member for. I, I really appreciate it, Joshua Rivera. Bill Reeve Mendez. Chris, I was over watching the Nicotina show last night. What's his name from Three Buck Theater said you should just start a new channel along with this channel. You should just do Snyderverse stuff in this channel until Warner Brothers gets their uh, SHIT together. Either way, I support your decision. We love Chris. Oh, Matt Jarble. Yeah, no, nah, I'm okay. I think uh, I think I've seen that. It seems like people are okay with my decision. And you know, to be honest, the uh, I've been doing Snyderverse stuff for years now, um, but I haven't actually jumped on the DC centric stuff until like four months ago, I think. And so. And, you know, I think it's kind of nice that um, I'm back to being called the ping pong flick show. It's not the the DC show or something. You know, I think the ping pong flick show um, in all intents and purposes was supposed to be all about flicks, movies. And it was at the beginning was about that. I did trailer reactions. I, I had reviews for for uh, like the shallow, you know, with Blake Lively, that shark movie. Um, and I think it's still on here somewhere. And um, Power Rangers and Godzilla. I reviewed X-Men. Uh, I reviewed um, Pixar stuff. I forgot what I did, but I, I had a lot. And so I think it would be kind of cool to go back to what I, what I was, uh, my intention was. But because I was so, you know, I'm so passionate about the, the Snyder Cut and, and the stuff like that. And it just, it took a lot of my attention and plus work. Um, but now that I'm, I, you know, um, own my own business, I'm an entre entrepreneur, I've, you know, uh, I have a lot more time now to focus, I think. And, and now I think I am I'm able to do it, I'd have a daily show. Now I think more than ever, uh, I have opportunities to put spotlight on, on projects, on other movies and things like that, that deserve um that spotlight that if i could make a difference in showing the world that hey look at this movie this is a great movie or this is this is a movie worth discussion and and things like that i i'm welcome that and i i think i'd be happy um to add to that as well you know so but thank you so much bell reed for, for that comment and, and thanks to matt jarbo for uh for his concern uh, good day, mate. Chris, especially enjoyed the piece on Martian Manhunter, uh, also known as Harry Lennox and Zack Snyder's Just League coming up in March. 
always informative, interesting, enjoyable, and relaxing too. And hear your show, stay gritty and healthy. Thank you so much, Frank. I really appreciate it. Zach P, I'm not going anywhere, Chris. Hot dogs all around. <laughs> Thank you so much. Keep that hot dog. <laughs> I'm going to need a new. I think uh, I practice a little tagline at the end, but oh, I'm probably going to mess it up after this. Shane S. Elman, I was a kid. Oh, this is my Power Rangers segment. I just put this out, so please check it out. I was a kid in the 90s and uh, remember Power Rangers well. The Green Ranger story was so brilliant. It was. It was like the first time. Like, you always think it's safe and, you know, they, they take care of the monster. But that arc was incredible. And you just rooted uh, for them. And when the Green Ranger, when he became a good guy, he was like the coolest ranger. The coolest, absolute coolest ranger. And he even got cooler after that, right? He became the white ranger. And, and he never, and he's been in this, In he has never really left Power Rangers. I think to this day, um, he could pop up at any time. Uh, imagine Zack Snyder Power Rangers movie. I do. Uh, and it will be pretty awesome. I don't know if he would do that, but it definitely, I, I would love to see a uh, Zack Snyder Power Rangers movie. I would say it would probably be very similar to the Adi Shankar uh, version, which is the bootleg universe, which, you know, I made fun of in the video, but I actually like that. I mean, I enjoy the campy ones and the 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 ones that are for kids, the Nickelodeon ones and the ones that back then, Fox Kids. I enjoy that as well, but I also love that darker take. Um, and that will be um, the Adi Shankar one. Uh, a lot of people don't like that, but I... I saw it for what it was, and it was like a future dystopian look at what happens after the Mighty Morphin. So, yeah. The editing on these top shelf are, is top shelf, Chris. Well, thank you, Kevon. Uh, it, it took me uh, all day <laughs> to do it. Uh, maybe I'll get faster, but we'll see. <laughs> Cody Slay, I'm super excited about this. I still remember watching this every Saturday with Megazord. Last movie wasn't horrible, but still had hope for his equal. Me too. Um, I gave a, I gave it a glowing review. I have the special Blu-ray box. Um, I had the comics. <laughs> I, I really wanted to see the sequel. I think it was a good start. And yeah, I didn't have that much action until the end. But I thought it was a good start. And I thought it could have garnered uh, an incredible sequel with the Green Ranger. In it. And, and, uh, and, you know, I thought that would have been a, a great future movies to that as well but unfortunately it is what it is you know paramount pictures saban you know sold power rangers to hasbro and and uh well now paramount pictures gave it to e1 which is a subsidiary of hasbro and so they're now they're the ones making hasbro products hasbro movies now so we'll see um and uh i'm actually kind of excited to see what type of movie that's going to be although i'm it probably going to be a lot more like the 95 Power Rangers, I think. Um, at least more kid-friendly, I, I would I would assume. All right. Well, that was it. That was a long uh, session, but that's because I, I never got to your members' comments and questions for like two days. And I finally got to it today, caught up with it. Um, and definitely tomorrow is going to be interesting. Like I said, Mortal Kombat probably is going to have a trailer. I'm wondering what other movies I can talk about. It's kind of exciting, really, uh, to broaden my horizons. Or, I, I mean, I've always broadened my horizons, but actually able to talk about it with you guys and girls. Um, like I said, I absolutely appreciate and love the support and enthusiasm for my decision. Um, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, like I said, if you absolutely love this new endeavor in covering entertainment news in all different genres, please click the like button, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, keep this hot dog light on, and I'll see you next time.